Hey guys, I'm Rimworld today. So in today's video, we're talking about the Springboks versus the British and Irish Lions for Game 3 of the 2021 Lions series. Of course, this is the decider, so whoever does win this game will win the whole series itself. Of course, you know, the Lions did win the first test, and the Springboks did win the second one. So yeah, like I said beforehand, whoever does win this one, you know, whoever wins Game 3 is going to win. So it's going to be very exciting to see, obviously, who... Who actually wins it? But of course, this game's been played within Cape Town once again, so I think both teams shouldn't have any problem with adjusting towards the you know the conditions of you know the actual stadium itself. I mean, even though the game's been played away for the Lions, it's kind of a, a good thing in the sense where obviously you know the game's been played at the, the exact same stadium as the last two, so it's not really going to be any you know trouble actually in switching obviously stadiums or adjusting towards a new uh, new climb or anything like that. So yeah, it should be pretty interesting to see how they obviously adapt towards that. But yeah, I mean, anyway, we'll just go over the uh, lineups now. So of course, with the Springboks, we'll go over their lineups up first so here is the uh, spring box starting lineup i want to buy you guys and yeah i'll tell you what i think about it so of course with the spring box you do have the likes of uh klitschkoff as well as uh, ima wame as well as mal herber of course you makes up that front row very good front row to say the least i mean klitschkoff and mal herber you know you can definitely tell that they're definitely the starting you know props obviously for the spring box i mean within that first test you know they, they used both of these within they used both of them within the second half of the game and it really just was it, it really just didn't work so and of course you know it worked perfectly really i'd say within the second test so yeah, you can definitely tell who's the uh, the starting caliber props, you could say, for the Springboks. But, of course, uh, Imbo Nombe, you know, he's brilliant, obviously, for the uh, Springboks. And, yeah, he's definitely, uh, you know, he's, he's, what, 33 years old, but he's still rocking on and still, you know, really... Yeah, you, you can definitely see he's a crucial part, you could say, towards this uh, Springbox side. So, yeah, definitely great to see him um, within this uh, starting lineup. But, of course, with the uh, locks, you do have the likes of Evan Etzebeth as well as uh, uh, Diego as that number five position. So, it's interesting to see that Diego is obviously starting this time because I do believe this is the first time he's actually starting for the Springbox um, in a while. And, of course, within that third and third and final crucial test. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how he does. Um, of course, you know, you do the likes of Khaleesi at six, you know, obviously the captain of the Springbox. And at seven, they have the likes of, uh, you know, Flanko Mostert. And at eight, they have the likes of um, Moesi. So it's very interesting to see, of course, uh, with, uh, you know, Flanko Mostert being at the number seven spot. Obviously, that's due to the likes of uh, Peter Seth Detroit being injured for this game. So, unfortunately, he will be ruled out for this game, which is a huge, you know, you could say loss for the Springboks. And obviously, that could come back to bite, uh, could come back, you know, to bite them. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, most, I think the combination of Etzbeth, Diego, and Mostert actually works pretty well. But at the same time, you do want someone like the likes of Peter Seth Detroit. So, it kind of, I guess, evens it out in that sense. I mean, you do have, like I said, Jasper Wacy at number eight. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't say he's had the best series um, against the Lions. But, of course, this is a learning, you know, learning kind of, um, you know, series for him in the sense where this is kind of his first opportunity with the Springboks. So, it's kind of a good, uh, you know, experience for him to actually gain from this. So, yeah, hopefully he gains, obviously, a lot from this uh, third test because it's probably the most, uh, you know... <laughs> I guess it's, yeah, it's the third test. It's the third and final test. So he's going to have to learn a lot from this one. But yeah, obviously with the uh, the bench, I mean, sorry, with bench, I mean, the backs, obviously, for the spin box, you do the likes of Kobus Reinock on number nine. You do the likes of uh, Andre Polo number 10. So a pretty good 9-10 combination, of course. Again, Flathaker is out for this one. So this is a, yeah, a huge, another huge blow, obviously, for the spin box. Of course, he did injure himself within that second game. Uh, the same with uh, Peter Seth Detroit. So uh, the spin box will be missing both, you know, two very crucial players towards the squad. So... It'll be very interesting to see how, you know, obviously uh, uh, see how Kobus Reinach does within the nine position. And, and don't get me wrong, he's actually a very good player and actually is a solid, you know, bench player to come off. But it's one of those where I would have preferred having Herschel Yankees, in my opinion. But at the same time, I understand why they're going with a more experienced player from this position because, you know, it is the third and final test and... Yeah, it is the decider. So, yeah, I understand that fully. I mean, with the uh, centers, obviously, they had gone the likes of uh, uh, Dialende and, of course, Lacanio Am. So, no changes there within the centers positions, which is kind of expected, you know, with those two being very dominant against the Lions within both of the tests so far. I mean, with the wingers, they have you know, unchanged again. You know, they had the likes of Mempimpi at 11 and, of course, uh, Chesson Kobe at 14. I mean, Pippi is really, yeah, he made a massive impact, you could say, within that second test. You know, obviously, got to try for himself. But Tristan Kobe hasn't really made that much of a difference, in my opinion. And I think that's really due to the Lions really, you know, utilizing, you know, really targeting him, uh, you know, within the defense and actually just making sure he doesn't really get the get the ball in his hands. So, yeah, credit to the Lions within that part. But, of course, you do the likes of really LaRue at that 15 spot that makes up the uh, rest of the team. So, yeah, pretty strong starting lineup, uh, to say the least. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's the best strong starting lineup that the Springboks can go of, but. For what they have, it's definitely yeah you know, pretty strong. So, yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty good lineup there, and hopefully um it's uh, does the job against the uh, the Lions. Of course, we'll move on to the Lions uh, squad right now. So of course, here is the Lions uh, British and Irish Lions squad. I'll talk about it right now, and then of course afterwards I will give my prediction for this game. So of course with the British and Irish Lions, you do have the likes of you know uh, Win Jones, of course at the number one position. You have the likes of Ken Owens at number two, and of course Tyler Furlong at number three. So a very good front row, to say the least. 
in my opinion, I'd say it's... Is it as good as the Spring... I, I wouldn't say it's as good as the Springbok one, but it's actually what I... It's probably the best front row, in my opinion, that the Lions can go with. Uh, this is actually the front row I would have started with um, in the third and final test. So I'm actually very happy that, you know, Warren Gallon has actually selected these three players because I think Wynn Jones is actually solid and he, he's, he's done very well throughout this whole tour. And it, Ken Owens, in my opinion, has... Like, the hooker position hasn't been really a guaranteed, I'd say, throughout this whole tour. And I think Ken Owens can definitely, I think he's the best hooker they have. So I can definitely see why you've gone with him instead of the likes of uh, Luke Corndicky as well as, you know, Jamie George. And then, of course, Ty Furlong is, like, the number one. Yeah, you have to go with him, really, within that uh, tight head spot. So fully understand that one. Of course, with the uh, locks, you do have the likes of Mario Toji at four, as well as Alan Jones, who, of course, is the captain at five. So, yeah, that's not really um, a debate in that position. And probably their strongest, I'd say, their strongest positions, I'd say, within that um, yeah, that front row, of course. I'm uh, sorry, with their forward pack, of course, you know, it's a Toji and Alan Jones, such a dominant front, uh, lock pairing that, yeah, it's probably one of the best in the world, really. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see if they can do the job, obviously, against this... Uh, you know, the world champions, the spin box. Of course, with the um, you know the loose forward pack, they have stuck with the same loose forward pack again. So they've gone with Courtney Laws at six, Tom Curry at seven, and of course Jack Conan at eight. So again, we're not seeing Falatau you know start within any of these tests, which is kind of surprising to say the least. I mean, Jack Conan, don't get me wrong, he's actually done very well, but I did think if, if there was one test you had to do it on, you know, bring Falatau in, I think it was this test, but. I like how, you know, Warren Gatlin stuck to his gun, so I'm not going to, you know, really deny that he's, you know, he has, it hasn't worked. But, yeah, I mean, Courtney Laws, uh, don't, I personally don't like Courtney Laws at the same time, but I can't disagree that he's had a brilliant series for the Lions. So, yeah, hopefully he does continue his uh, form, obviously, for them. And then Tom Curry is just a brilliant player overall, so hopefully he does uh, does the job. Of course, with the back line, you know, the Lions have gone with the likes of Ali Price at 9, as well as Dan Beggar at 10. So, again, they've switched out the scrum up, of course, with uh, Connor Murray now... Um, on the bench, so yeah, interesting switch right there, of course, with the for the Lions. I mean, at the uh, center spots, they are going the likes of uh, Bunyaki at twelve, as well as Henschel at thirteen. So this is the Irish pairing, of course, and very the ha very happy to see Aki in the squad. I mean, it's fu about time they actually put him in uh, within this uh, series because he, in my opinion, actually could be the uh, the crucial uh, key in actually unlocking this uh, you know this you know South African defense really. And I do believe he'll bring you know his A game within this game. He's been one of the best players I think for the Lions actually throughout the whole series and. To be, you know, to credit him, actually, I, I, I didn't actually think he should have been selected, but after seeing his performances throughout this whole series, he definitely deserves to start within this game. So I'm not going to deny that by by a mile. I mean, with the wingers, they had gone the likes of Van der Merver again at 11, but they have finally have answered our prayers and have put Josh Adams within the side at number 14. So very happy to see Josh Adams get an opportunity, of course. And at, at the same time, Liam Williams as well at 15. So yeah, very exciting to see what the Lions do. Of course, they have made several changes within that back line, but it should, I think that's, I think that's what they needed to do if they want to unlock this uh, Springbok defense. But anyway, that's kind of it with the uh, the Lions squad. You know, if I'd actually say who actually wins this game, I think I'm going to have to give it... I, I want to say the Lions will win this, but it's one of those where... Uh, going off the last... like it, It's one of those where the Lions... It, it's actually in Lions' favor to win this game with the likes of Flatha Kirk and Peter Seth the Toy out. But I just have a funny feeling that you know the, the Springboks can, you know, with that, you know... With their three uh, locks on that side, they can do some damage. So for that reason, I actually think the Springboks will win it, but I think it'll be by like one point. So I'm gonna say they'll win this game. I'll say twenty three points to twenty two. Yeah, I'll say twenty three points twenty twenty three points twenty two towards the Springboks is my final prediction for this game. So yeah, it's gonna be very close, but yeah, can't wait to see what happens. Of course, just letting you guys know that I will be um, not posting. I, I won't be posting videos, unfortunately, for the next uh, two weeks. So until I come back on the 18th, um, I'm actually going to the U.S. just for a bit. So it's going to be pretty hard to actually, you know, kind of uh, do my videos from there. But um, as soon as I come back, of course, I will be uh, posting some videos. Um, you can actually see some videos on the Kiwi Lads channel. Um, I've, I've done a few videos with him, and obviously there there are a few videos obviously up and coming that we'll do together. So definitely check his channel and um, yeah that's kind of it with the video so anyway just uh, hope you guys have a good day and yeah talk to you guys soon